Many of the Navy's underwater tasks can be done faster and more efficiently using shallow water diving systems. It is the nature of the work rather than the depth of the water that usually determines whether a shallow water outfit or a deep sea rig should be worn. If the job requires mobility, it is most likely a job for a shallow water diver. The Navy uses two general types of shallow water diving systems. The self-contained underwater breathing apparatus, or scuba, and the surface supplied system using the lightweight diving outfit. In this film, we will deal only with a lightweight diving outfit. With this system, the diver draws his air from a topside source. Although mobile, he is linked to the surface by his lifeline and hose. One important advantage of the lightweight outfit over the scuba is the use of the lifeline as a communication link. Another is an indefinite air supply. Most ships are equipped for shallow water diving. This film shows how to use the lightweight diving outfit in preparing for a dive, during the dive, and during emergencies. Use of any diving outfit begins with complete familiarization with its components. The lightweight diving outfit consists of three parts, the breathing assembly, the dress, and the weighted belt. Let's first look at the breathing assembly. This assembly is made up of the hose, control valves, and face mask. Starting with the hose, we'll follow the path the air takes as it goes to the diver. The hose itself is standard 5 16 inch oxygen hose. It is married to a manila lifeline by lashings every three feet. There is liberal slack between lashings to prevent strain on the hose when there is tension on the lifeline. As air flows to the diver, the first valve it intercepts is the non-return valve. This is the most important valve in any surface supplied diving system. It permits air to flow toward the diver, but prevents it from returning through the hose should air pressure be lost. If pressure were lost and there was no non-return valve, the full force of ambient water pressure would squeeze the mask against the diver's face. At only 60 feet, there could be hundreds of pounds of pressure exerted against this faceplate. The next valve in the direction of airflow is the air control valve. With it, you can control the volume of air admitted to the mask. Next, you have the inhalation valve. It is a simple two-way valve permitting the diver to choose his source of air. When turned backwards, it admits air from the hose. When turned forward, it enables the diver to breathe directly from the atmosphere. If turned forward underwater, of course, it will flood the mask. This is the exhaust valve. As the diver exhales, the rubber disc opens under the added pressure of the expelled air. At end of exhalation, water pressure again closes it. The face mask itself has three functions. The tough plexiglass face plate protects the diver's face. It gives him a broad, clear field of vision, and the mask distributes the incoming air to the diver's nose and mouth. The rubber seal adapts the mask to the contours of the face. The tightness of the fit can be controlled by adjusting the rubber harness straps. The dress itself is a tough, rubberized, two-ply fabric. Its use is optional. It should be worn when physical hazards are anticipated, such as barnacles or coral, or when working in cold water. The weighted leather belt compensates for the additional buoyancy gained by wearing the lightweight dress. The buckle is designed for quick releasing, enabling the diver to slip out rapidly and ascend to the surface in the event of an emergency. 
The weight of the belt can be varied up to 45 pounds by removing or adding weights as needed. If the lightweight dress is not needed for the job, a weighted scuba belt may be enough to neutralize your buoyancy. The weights can be varied in this belt also. It too is quick releasing. You have seen all of the equipment making up the lightweight diving outfit. Now let's prepare for an actual diving job. First, know exactly what is expected of you on this job. Make sure you know all the details before you dive. Your diving supervisor is responsible for telling you what to do. If there is anything you don't understand, get it straight now. Next, check your entire air supply from compressor to face mask. Make sure all hose couplings are tight and that there are no leaks. Remove the non-return valve and conduct a smoke test to make sure it works. With the non-return valve back in place, crack the air control valve. Hold the mask to your face and sample the air for pressure and for purity. The air won't smell like a fresh spring breeze, but on the other hand, it should not bear traces of oil or fumes. With your breathing assembly checked out, start dressing for the dive. Put on woolen underwear if you are required to wear the lightweight dress. Soap your hands to make it easier to slip the rubber cuffs over your wrists. Lace the hood snugly to prevent air pockets from accumulating. Tie the laces off in a bow knot and tuck the ends in. Close the entrance by folding the material into two and one half inch pleats. Fold these across the middle to form a five ply bundle. Double the bundle and secure it with the clamp. The clamp should be hand tight only. Kneel in a crouch position to rid the suit of excess air. Put on the belt. Make sure it is crossed only in back and below the clamp so that it can be ditched quickly in event of an emergency. Loop the lifeline once around your waist underneath the shoulder straps and above the belt and tie it off with a slip bowline. Make sure the slip bowlin is above the quick release buckle. Now you're ready for the face mask. Moisten the inside of the face plate to prevent fogging from your breath. Loosen the rubber harness. Tighten the chin strap first, then the cheek straps, and finally the head strap.
Turn off the air valve and inhale. If the mask collapses, the seal is good. Then adjust your air control valve for a comfortable breathing pressure. Tug on the lifeline and make sure there is no strain on the air hose. You're now ready to enter the water. Always use a ladder when available. Face the ladder and climb down slowly. Submerge three or four feet and adjust your air once again. Make sure your mask does not admit water. If it does, surface and re-tighten the straps. Now, you're ready to do the work you were sent down to do. Take a few moments to familiarize yourself with your surroundings, to study the job. Never plunge right in and go to work, no matter how simple the task. When you do begin, work slowly and carefully. Because of its inherent simplicity, the lightweight diving outfit can be dangerous. The mobility it gives you makes it easier to foul your lifeline and hose. Periodically, check your lines to make sure they are tending free. This is particularly important when working around obstructions, such as piers or sunken vessels. Finally, always be prepared to make a direct ascent. Check your position from time to time to make sure you have not worked your way under some overhead obstruction. Now let's consider some emergency procedures. First, always be ready for a loss of air. Unlike the deep sea rig, the lightweight outfit provides no temporary air supply. If your air is interrupted, you must immediately ascend. First, release your belt. Do not ditch your face mask or lifeline, for air may be restored at any moment. And even without air, your face mask still affords protection and improves your visibility. Be sure to exhale all the way to the surface. Your natural instinct is to hold your breath, but doing this could cause an air embolism. In the interest of safety, we will demonstrate in a diving tank what to do if your lifeline is fouled and you must make an emergency ascent. You have no alternative other than releasing your lifeline and ditching the face mask. Again, be sure to exhale all the way to the surface. During the job, a small amount of water may seep into the mask, particularly when your head is lowered or when your air pressure is lower than it should be. To clear your mask, tilt your head back, increase air pressure, and pull mask slightly away from your chin. Knowing what to do in an emergency is an important requirement for safe, shallow water diving. Take advantage of any opportunities to practice emergency ascents under control conditions. Keep at it until each step becomes an automatic reflex. The lightweight diving outfit gives the diver a mobility he has never known in conventional deep sea rigs. But this mobility has a price and the price could be your life. When used according to the book, the shallow water systems are as safe as any other diving technique, but the danger lies in taking a shortcut, eliminating a safety precaution to save time. The job always looks simple, but simplicity breeds carelessness. 
the best lifesaver you take with you on the job is your own experience and knowledge of what to do in an emergency. Rehearse in your mind what you must do when faced with an emergency. Your reactions will be almost automatic. Knowing what to do and doing it can make the difference between a routine ascent and tragedy. 